Hi. Today, Jen Liu and I are going to present the works of three Jewish composers who were silenced by the Nazis. Performing their music ensures that we remember them, that their legacy can continue, and in this way, we give them back their voice. James Simon, in October of 1944, at the age of 64, was murdered in Auschwitz. Although before Hitler's ascent to power in 1933, he was regarded as an important late Romantic German composer, pianist, and musicologist. Today, he is virtually unknown and mostly forgotten. Simon was born on the 29th of September, 1880, in Berlin, in a highly assimilated, well-to-do Jewish family. He grew up studying piano and philosophy and was a student of composition with Max Bruch. Being an outstanding pianist, James began his career as a freelance musician. He was active as a pianist, chamber music player, collaborated with singers and recitals. His compositions were performed by the Berlin Philharmonic. He played the piano part of the Firebird Suite with Wilhelm Furtwangler conducting. He was a professor teaching composition in Berlin from 1907 and until the arrival of the Nazis. His compositions before the Nazi takeover were published by various publishing companies. However, many of his works, especially those composed after the Nazi ascent to power, remain unpublished. In 1933, following Hitler's appointment as Reich Chancellor, he fled Berlin, first to Zurich, and then to the Netherlands, where he settled in Amsterdam, where he continued to compose and perform. In 1938, he visited his brother-in-law in Palestine, his sister, Berta, had died in February of that year, and the lament, which we will be playing today, was composed to honor her memory. While in Palestine, James gave concerts and lectures in Jerusalem and in Tel Aviv. He performed his cello sonata for the Palestinian radio. From Paris, his son sent an urgent telegram to his father, advising him urgently to stay in Palestine, to go underground. But Simon decided to return to Amsterdam. In early spring 1944, Simon was arrested and sent to the Westerbork transit camp in Holland. On July 4th, Simon, as prisoner number 232, along with a thousand other inmates, was deported to the Terezin concentration camp located in Terezin, Czechoslovakia. Terezin was a hybrid concentration camp and ghetto established by the SS in the fortress town in which tens of thousands of Jews were killed. Terezin served two main purposes. It was simultaneously a way station to the extermination camps in Poland while also serving a propaganda role. The conditions were deliberately engineered to hasten the deaths of its prisoners. Holding many musicians from all over Europe, it also had a rich musical life, and Simon quickly entered the musical life of the ghetto. He gave many lectures and recitals, and while he quite likely wrote other works there, none have survived. On October 12, 1944, Simon was deported to Auschwitz, where he was gassed shortly after arrival. A survivor of Terezin remembers how the composer seemingly unaware of what happened around him, sat on his suitcase, waiting for the train, and jotting down his last musical thoughts. He continued to compose until the very end. Simon Lux, born in Warsaw in 1901, was a Polish Jewish composer. In 1925, he moved to Vienna and then to Paris to further his musical training. Lux was gaining a reputation as a talented composer. The Romance, which we will perform today, is part of a collection of three concert pieces for cello and piano written in 1935 during his time in Paris. It is a melancholy melody with blues harmonies exuding a French atmosphere. In 1940, France was de defeated by Germany. Lox was arrested in 1941, interned first in a camp near Orléans before being deported to the Auschwitz concentration camp, extermination camp, where he became prisoner number 49543. Lux survived his time in Auschwitz between 1942 and 1944 as head of the men's orchestra in Auschwitz-Birkenau. He composed a song cycle just two years after his release in 1947 called Oui Chant Populaire Juif, Eight Popular Jewish Songs. These works hold particular significance as music from a lost and brutally destroyed world. From this cycle, we will perform an arrangement of the haunting melody from the Alte Kasha, The Eternal Question. The final composer that we are featuring today is Aldo Finzi. Finzi was born in Milan on the 4th of February, 1897, into an old Jewish family that originally came from Mantua. In the 1920s and early 30s, Finzi was gaining success and celebrity among Italian, Italian composers. 
and he produced many compositions, including lyric and symphonic music, chamber works, and also a dramatic work named Shylock, inspired by anti-Jewish persecutions. With the onset of the racial laws, Aldo Finzi's musical career came to an end. He was 39 years old. Like many other artists and scientists of, the interna of international renown, Finzi tried to emigrate and was able to obtain a teaching position at the University of Chicago. With the outbreak of the war, not wanting to leave his family, he decided to cancel the plan. During the Nazi occupation that followed, Finzi went into hiding, working anonymously or under an assumed name. Finzi survived the war, but it took a heavy toll. Overwhelmed and emotionally exhausted, at 48 years old, on the day of his birthday, he suffered a heart attack and died three days later. Despite being recognized as a considerable musical talent, the unfortunate timing of the onset of World War II and his early death in 1945 undoubtedly contributes to the fact that the work and profile of Aldo Finzi remains fairly unknown outside of Italy. His last wish was that his music be performed. Only his wife, Lina, attended his funeral, and he was buried under a false name. After decades of silence, he's now being recognized as a noteworthy composer alongside Strauss, Debussy, and Respighi, all of whom he knew personally. He is praised for his eclectic style, which was both individual and influenced by the musical tendencies of his time. We hope you enjoy the program.